In this video, I'm taking my very first look at this, Cubasis 3, a full feature digital audio workstation for your iPhone or iPad. Let's go. Hi, my name is Pete and welcome to Studio Live today. And here we are in, not GarageBand, but Cubasis 3 from Steinberg, because in this video, I'm going to let you know my very first impressions of using Cubasis 3 for the very first time time. Let's dive in and get started. Now, Cubasis is not new. In fact, Cubasis 3 is not even that new. It's here in August 2020, and Cubasis 3 has been out since the start of the year, but it is brand new to me. And the reason that I'm trying this out is that I've been using GarageBand on iOS for a very long time. It is like my second skin. I'm very comfortable in there, but I wanted to push myself out of my comfort zone and try something new. The question I want to answer here is, do you need to go to these additional features? Because I know many Many of you that use GarageBand right now might be wondering the exact same thing. And you know what? If you're already a Cubasis user, well, guess what? You get to laugh along and watch Pete stumble his way through learning a new piece of software. Let's get in and get creating. So here is the Cubasis 3 interface and a big thanks to Steinberg who were kind enough to provide me with this copy so that I could take a look. It does cost around $50 US or your equivalent in your part of the world if you do want to pick up the full version of Cubasis 3. Here is our interface. Pretty familiar if you've used any sort of digital audio workstation. We've got a number of tracks that we can select down here with our audio and MIDI regions. We've got transport controls up the top here to go to the start and the end of our loop and our project. We can play, we can record, we can set our metronome there. Taking a look down the side here, we've got a standard sort of mute and solo on each of our tracks that we can actually engage there. But here's where things get a little bit different. We've got a bunch more options kind of hidden away in the side and up the top here. And I've spent 30 minutes so far playing around with this, just so you didn't have to see me completely stumble around. So let's jump in and I'll show you some of the cool things that I've already discovered, and then we'll do a bit of a recording so I can actually try Cubasis for the first time. So the first major difference I've noticed is that we've got a bunch of different views, which can make our mixing and creating easier as we can switch things around. So we've got the media option here where we can come down and access all of our audio and MIDI and instruments and projects. We've then got this one, which changed between pads if we're using something like this it changes to uh, where's our keyboard one uh, still pads there where's our piano there it is changes to a keyboard if we go to our piano instrument and I'm assuming when we record uh, audio uh, microphones and guitars which we'll be doing in a future video stay tuned for that it'll be different again there and then yes we have a mixer so I know that all of my GarageBand user friends are salivating over this one. We've got vertical faders. And even better than that, we can actually stretch this up and look at that. Look at the uh, the finite changes that we can actually do on these mixes. So that is something I'm looking forward to playing around with, with like a nice, decent channel there in order to mix my tracks. And you've got uh, the ability to send and receive and use insert plugins, as you can see here. So there's a lot going on there. We'll dive into it in future videos but uh, yeah my first impression of this is super powerful but also a little tiny bit overwhelming because there's so much going on here but I'm sure like anything with more practice and getting used to it it'll become a lot easier so they're the sort of main options up the top there let's take a look now over at the side because there's a whole lot of extra stuff going on over here so I do like the way that the modular design of Cubasis helps you just sort of move things in and out of the way. So you can see down the left-hand side here, we've got a bunch of controls for our track, and we can actually tap to bring these out if we want to. So now we can actually know all the things we're doing here. So we've got uh, the, the main part of our instrument at the top here. We've got routing here. This is something that I'm looking forward to playing around with, being able to route into different buses and send things around. Uh, it's going to be a bit daunting to start with, but we'll get there there. Uh, I don't know what this does. There you go. That just brings us into our instrument options there. We've got insert effects here so we can add effects directly to the track just like we can in GarageBand or any other DAW. But we've also got these. We've got send effects so we can actually send it out to a reverb channel, a delay channel. And control that so that's something i'm looking forward to playing around with for sure uh, we've got some midi effects here I haven't actually played around with them at all automation which is uh, able to automate not only just your volume but other things as well looking forward to playing with that a notepad we've got our channel so if you don't if you don't have the mixer open you want to quickly go in and make some volume changes you can tap your channel and adjust your volume mute and solo etc there and then uh, we've got color 
Now, this is a small thing, but how cool is it that we can custom change our colors? Uh, when I used Reaper before I moved to GarageBand, I would custom change my colors so that my all my bass was one color, drums with another, pianos and keys were another, guitars were another, vocals another. So that's something that I'm sure I'll play around with as we continue on. So a heap of options there, so much that you can do there. And you can also see across the top here, We've got a bunch of other controls, and these are uh, contextual, so they'll be they'll change depending on what type of track we select here. Uh, between an audio track and a MIDI track, there's different things you can and can't do, but they're the sort of things that we'll be playing around with in future videos as I get more familiar. Now, this is a demo track that we have here, so it's already uh, already set up. When you load up Cubases for the first time, you get this sort of demo track going on. Let's just give it a quick play. <laughs> Yeah, very cool. Uh, so yeah, everything is already in here, but I wanna actually do something for myself. I wanna play something brand new. So why don't we work out how to start a new project and then uh, we'll have a bit of a play. We'll have an experiment and record some sounds here in Cubasis. Now I've only done this once before in my 30 minutes of testing and I think it's up here. Yeah, it's in the media options here. So we can go media, projects, a new project and this should give us a nice brand spanking new project which we'll call Pete is noob because he is and hit OK and that's going to load up a brand new project for us. I'm just pinching there to zoom in on that project. Now we've got project settings here that you can see we can set the tempo here and uh, you'll be happy to know not only do we have whole BPM, but you can go with decimal points. So if you're bringing in your 119.6 BPM loop, then you can actually set your tempo accordingly, which is cool. And yes, complex time signatures too. Sorry, I know my, my GarageBand friends are just like going, oh, how I wish. Uh, but again, the, the whole point of this is, are these additional options that you don't have in GarageBand worth? A, the cost, and B, the complexity. That's what we're going to explore and discover. So we've got our project set there, all of our project settings. Now uh, we've got this, which I like. We've got the ability to just set a little loop here. So if we're recording eight bars, we can set this in and uh, get ready to record. Let's now jump over and find ourselves some, add some tracks, find some instruments, and get a few test tracks in here recorded to see how the workflow works here in Cubasis. So we'll tap away the media button there and we need to go down the bottom here to add a track. Now this is where things are a little bit more complicated because you don't just go push button says guitar and then play guitar. You need to know a little bit more about how things work here. So we'll do plus, we've got audio, MIDI and group. Track groups is something that I've been missing. When I use Reaper, my DAW on PC, I love me some track grouping for things like drums, vocals, guitars. We've got that in Cubasis, looking forward to trying that out, but for now, Let's grab a MIDI instrument. Uh, so you can see there it's created track one. And by default, I'm pretty sure it's probably just popped the piano on here or has it? Uh, we'll tap on the pads here. What have we got? Yeah, we've got the acoustic piano here and we've got our pads. Now, I, I'm, I'm honestly not sure why I put it to pads and not to the keyboard layout. And I haven't quite worked out how to change that yet. So this, <laughs> this is going to be some of the fun. And, you know, people are screaming. Cubasis users are screaming at me going, just press the blur button. You'll be fine, Pete. But we'll play around with this anyway. Uh, and we'll just record something in. So to record, I'm assuming we're going to hit the record button. And uh, we'll be able to tap on these pads. And record things. So let's uh, let's get a. What do we want? We want a. Let's just record some random chords, shall we? We'll hit record. Two, three. We probably want to leave the metronome on. Uh, is that our undo button? We're hovering over buttons and it doesn't give us a context menu. I would have loved that because I'm not actually sure what some of these do. If I hold over that, I think it's undo. We'll tap it. <laughs> I don't know now. What have we done? No, that's our looping function. That's our loop record. Uh, I'm just going to delete it because I don't know how to undo. How do I delete? That is a race. That'll do. <laughs> We're learning. It's okay. You can you can laugh at me. It's fine. Uh, we'll go to the pads. Uh, let's try this again. Or this time, turn the metronome on, and we'll record in a little bit of something here. And of course, I recorded that terribly just so that I could show you some of the edit. No, I didn't really. Um, but I'm assuming we can double. Yep, we can double tap on that one and come in here to our piano roll editor, which looks pretty cool. And if this behaves like everything else, can we just drag? Yeah, we can. 
we can just drag it up. And I kind of like this sort of setup where we can just drag things into place and then you can use as much or as little of the screen real estate as you want. And are these easy to edit? Looks like they are. Yep, pretty, pretty straightforward there. Uh, double tap. What does that do? Oh, we've got velocity down here. Okay, so we've got our velocity controls down the bottom here to change the velocity of our different different sounds. That's cool. This will take some getting used to again, but that's okay. Um, we've got time. <laughs> so uh, we'll leave that as it is for now. We'll go back to the start there. Uh, I, I get a bit lost here. There are little, uh, little X's in the corners here if you just want to get rid of what you're in. And I'm finding I'm using them quite a bit because I get super lost there. So that's how we can record that in. Let's take a look at some other tracks here now. If we tap on the add button, uh, let's go audio this time. So that's our MIDI and we can record in MIDI, use a MIDI keyboard, select different instruments. I'll show you some more of those in a moment. But for now, let's go audio. So we've tapped audio track there. And this time, if we come down to here, uh, I need to work out how to actually get to, there it is. If I open it up there, uh, that's the name of the track. Uh, hold please, I'll just work out how to actually select something like a loop to actually put on this audio track. Okay, so I think I've worked it out and it was very simple. So media, we want media, we should go to media. So here we are in the media browser. Now if we go to audio here, yeah, here we go. We've got some drum loops that are built in here. So let's go to our drum loops and let's just find ourselves something. What about a funky groove? Uh, now, I haven't worked out, can we just play these in here? It looks like we can, but they don't play back. I need to work out how we can preview them before we bring them in. That's okay. Let's just drag this on in. We'll do that. Now, the one thing I have uh, worked out here, well, I'll put on a new track. That's okay. The one thing I've worked out here is that it doesn't automatically beat match it to your grid. I'm sure you can make it do that, and I'm sure it's one of these options up here, but I haven't quite worked it out yet. Do we just stretch? Can we just stretch it out? Uh, make it go? No. <laughs> Sorry, I'm just uh, experimenting here now. Oh yeah, there we go. So we can stretch it out there to our one, two, three, four bars. So, okay. That wasn't hard at all, was it? <laughs> so that's pretty cool. Uh, let's just play this along now. Sounding terrible, Pete. Let's get rid of this. So we'll mute this piano track and uh, we probably need to speed this up, don't we? Let's speed this up to make it, we've got to tap to tempo here. Let's do something like that. See, now it's going to stretch this. So, I mean, it'll, it'll take some getting used to. I'll just need to work out how to actually keep this all happening. What do we have now? All right. So again, it's, it's having that flexibility. You, you sacrifice some of the simplicity for the flexibility. And that's probably going to be the overarching summary of this video is that, uh, yeah, if you want 100% simple, point and click, just do your thing, GarageBand and some of the other simpler free DAWs or lower price DAWs are gonna work for you. I like the fact that we've got some power under the hood here. And the nerdy side of me is getting super excited about diving into this. So we've got a drum track there. Let's go back, let's find some cooler MIDI tracks to add some bass maybe to this drum track. So we already have this audio track here, so we should be able to go to media. Uh, actually, that's an audio track. What, what happens if we go MIDI? Uh, are they, so these are MIDI loops, are they? Different types of loops. Uh, we'll add an instrument and we'll go into Microsonic, which is uh, all of these. You get a heap of different instruments here uh, built in to Cubasis, which is cool. So why don't we find a bass? We'll come down here. I think I saw some basses down a bit further. Oh, I'm not sure if there's any uh, way to way to search here. Let me find a bass and then we'll come back. All right, we found an upright bass. Now, can I just select that? What do I do? Double tap it. Uh, we've got an audio track here, but I'm wondering if it's smart enough to just let us know. Um, I, I think I need to redo this. And if we go add there and we go add MIDI track this time, and then we select on here and we go to our list here. Uh, I know it's, it's like watching a, 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 like a newborn seal pup trying to like swim around, isn't it? Uh, let's come down here and find that bass again. Oh look, we've got banjos and ukuleles. That's gonna make some people happy. Upright bass, there we go. Now we've got the option to go in here to our pads. And again, I can't, <laughs> I can't work out how to get back to our keyboard for this sound. Um, oh, it's that. <laughs> Told you that you'd be like, Pete, it's just a button. It's right there. You can go between pads and keyboard mode there. Now, I do like that the keyboard is customizable. You can not only select the range, but you can use these to drag it out. So you can have as much or as little screen real estate taken up as you want. I think that's super cool. And now, 
Yeah, that's a cool sounding upright bass sound, right? So let's just uh, see if we can hit record and we'll play along here just on the keyboard here. Don't have my MIDI keys plugged in at the moment, but we'll just play along to this funky beach. We could do better than that, can't we? Uh, I still haven't found the undo though. <laughs> what happens if we just record over it? Let's just go back to the start and hit record again because I'm interested. Is this going to override it by default or what's it going to do? Let's find out. Two, three, four. Sounds like it's overwriting it. Ah, oh, we're having some fun here. Yeah, there you go. It's done that. Let's delete out this. Can we work out how to delete things? Erase. There we go. Erase. All right, let's try that again. Here was the problem is I got too fancy with my keyboard here. We don't actually need that much range. So let's bring it in. So my thick fingers are going to work here and go back to the start, hit record and try again. All right, that's fun. Uh, that seemed to work okay. So if we tap again on our keys here, we're back to here. Uh, and there you go. We've got our, our bass and our keys. And I'm assuming if we double tap that, yep, we're straight here into our piano roll. Can I just easily delete that missed note there? Tap it. Uh, I tap. There you go. Erase. Boom. And yeah, it looks like you've got some pretty easy control options here in your piano roll. And like everything else, you can use however much or however little of the space you want. I am thinking that a 12.9 inch iPad Pro would have been really nice. I've got the 11 inch, but there's a lot going on on the screen. The screen real estate uh, is important by the looks of it when you're using something like this. Uh, but that's pretty cool. Um, I like that. And then, uh, yeah, we've got our, yeah, we've got our, our groove here. And we can do a lot of cool things with the actual audio file too in this audio editor, which is something that I need to dive into and play around with a lot more in future videos. But there you go. Why don't we check out some of these effects before we finish up here? Because that's where this is really going to come into its own with some of the cool effects included here in Cubasis. So I really do like that we can get this back to like a really clean interface. So if we've got our keys open or we've got our mixer open and we've got this open, we can actually just sort of turn everything back and get back to a nice clean interface here for doing our editing. And then we want to get to our mixing, we can throw the mixer up and even bring it up and make it nice and big and play around with that. So that's kind of cool. Let's take a look at this sort of side menu that we've got going on here. So if we go to our upright base, we've got some insert effects. So if we wanted to come in here, we've got a channel strip, which I think is super cool. We'll tap on that. Yeah, look at that. We've got a nice chunky channel strip that we've got our noise gate, our compressor, our saturator, all of the stuff there that we can start playing around with. So if you're more used to a standard mixer, mixing desk type interface, you can use that. And then we've got a heap going on down here. We've got the Studio EQ. Oh, we've got to go back each time we select it. We've got Shelf EQ. Yep. We've got a compressor that we can add in here. So let's just sort of, let's play with this compressor because this looks like a simple and hopefully effective compressor. We've got a threshold, output gain, we've got a ratio attack release. So if we play this track again now. And we've got nice, nice displays there for the actual amount of uh, reduction, gain reduction we're getting from our compressor. So that's kind of cool. We've got a lot of good things going on there. Now I did see, I did see some other effects. So they're the internal ones. We've got waves effects here. Ah, they've got this little bag next to them. So this may mean that if we tap on this, yeah, there we go. So there, there are additional purchases here. So $12.99 here in Australia to buy the Waves audio track if we wanted to play around with that. And Oh, there you go. We've got a whole bunch. We've got the plugins bundle. We've got other things going on there. Uh, what, other, what other effects do we have that we can use here? Uh, so we've got other packs and I think, yeah, so these are the Cubasis FX packs. So we can add in again. So if you want things like tape delay, stereo delay, long delay, you can actually uh, buy some additional packs. How much are they? Let's have a look. Uh, $10.99, so reasonably priced if we wanted to add some stuff. But of course, like you can in every DAW, we can also add in our own effects. So we can use audio unit or into app audio. So audio unit, here's all of my audio unit plugins. So if I want to throw the good old door cassette here from Clev Grand on there, I can throw it on. And now we get a nice crunchy bass which I probably don't really want, so we'll turn it off. Uh, but that is cool. 
And I won't play around with these in this video, but uh, I'll definitely be exploring using channels to send and receive. So sending effects out to a reverb here, you can have one reverb strip set up, and then you can actually send all of your tracks out to that one reverb with different amounts. So similar to a master reverb. Oh, by the way, I buried the lead here, but master fader, master track, right? <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to enjoy playing around with the master track. That is going to do it for this one. Uh, I'm going to take a quick pause and then I'll return with a summary of my first impressions of Cubasis 3. So I've now spent just over an hour with Cubasis 3. What do I think? Well, I'm pretty darn impressed, i got to tell you. So what I like about it is the interface, despite having a lot going on, is nice and clean. You can clean it all up by just removing things, and then when you need them, you can pop them straight back out and jump in and do what you need to do. So everything is kind of modular and component-based, which makes it easy to move around. On the other side, there is a lot going on. It is, it is more complex to get things started and to actually get something recorded in there. All the functionality is there, but there's less hand-holding going on here. So if you compare it to something like GarageBand, where you just go in, you press a button, and everything's set up for you, you need to know a little bit more about what you want to get done. But that's always going to be the, the, the case here. We're sacrificing a little bit of ease of use for a whole lot of flexibility. So what do I think so far? I kind of like it and we'll be coming back and exploring this in more detail because I'm going to use this to record. We're going to plug in guitars, microphones. We're going to use all of the different functionality that we have in here and learn as much as we can. In the meantime, if you've got tips for me, if you've got resources I should be checking out in my learning journey, please go ahead and throw those down in the comments. And if you've got your first thoughts, your first impressions, seeing Cubasis 3 for the first time, if it is your first time, let me know about those as well. Thanks for watching, folks. I'll see you on the next one.